What's going on everybody? Reggie, the Front Row Report here. We're in Indianapolis, Indiana. I got Robert from Escape to Fate. How's it going, man? It's good, man. Awesome. Of, uh, second day of tour, so I'm still like adjusting. <laughs> I'm tired. Nice. It's all good. Nice. So, how did last night go? First night of the tour. Like I said, you know, still adjusting, <laughs> still figuring things out. Uh, it was interesting. We had a lot of technical issues going on. Oh. Uh, but it's expected every time, you know, you, you get into a your first show and then everyone's mm -hmm. flying in and doing different things it's it's always uh, gonna be a bit hectic so it, it stresses you out but you just gotta persevere through it and mm -hmm. you know still put on a good show we had to cut a few songs sucks <laughs> but you know the songs we did play was it was pretty kick ass awesome. so, so it ended up you know being a good night overall. awesome yeah the first night of the tour every, something bad is bound to go wrong it oh, seems like yes you know? <laughs> absolutely you know so you guys are on tour with Hollywood Undead right now also out supporting ungrateful which just came out a couple months ago yes uh first album on 11 7 as well yeah um what was that transition like for you guys why did you choose to go another direction label wise well it fucking sucked because <laughs> 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 uh, yeah i mean the, the thing was uh with uh interscope we were with before they were uh you know they're basically done with rock i think they might have one band left but yeah. you know it, it, it rock is is a little bit falling on hard times right now so yeah. but that's why i persevered because i love it that's, that's what helped raise me so you know i'm gonna fight for it and i just don't think they had the same mentality and that's the big problem we had throughout the whole process of being with them i mean they showed us a, a, a lot of respect and a lot of interest in us and they put their money where their mouth is and they invested a lot in us but when it came down to promoting the record and you know the the idea of how to promote it they just weren't on the same page as us you know they're doing all kinds of weird stuff they're talking about us collaborating with like r&b producers hey. and, doing, and i mean dude we're all about experimenting and having fun it's music and you know it's always a good learning experience but we're a rock band dude we don't need to be trying to do what everyone on the pop right. charts are doing that's just you know fuck it if we're gonna go pop it's gonna go because you know our heavy fucking rock shit made it to the pop charts it's not being right. we changed for it and so in essence they they almost like wanted us to sell out in a way and we were going through a lot of difficulties and they didn't have our back you know and when we went with 11 7 they're they're more of a straight up rock label so that's yeah. something that you know really excited us they they're very good at going to radio which is something that we're interested in doing so you know it was it was a pretty smooth transition once we like came on board with them it was like cool you know and they they back us you know they get our vision they get where we come from you know we're teaching them things here and there nice <laughs> uh, how to how to be a fucking rock and roll band but you know it's overall it's a pretty good relationship with them and we're really excited awesome this is also <clears throat> the, the, your guys's fourth record overall yeah um how how has the recording and writing and composing process changed you know over the course of the last couple albums it, it really seems like you guys have really you know really struck something really good with this record yeah well, i mean it, it just overall with the albums to change from once we, we were a band and we used to jam and we used to write songs to we could afford laptops <laughs> and so now everything is just on you know you demo shit out on computers and stuff and like i said before i mean we like to experiment with different artists like we we did a lot of stuff on this record with our friend uh, brandon who used to be in a uh, atreyu and he's now in hell or high water and uh we just clicked i mean he's the exact same vibe as us you know he comes from the sort of scene the warp tour stuff and you know ap stuff and you know he still loves to, you know a big arena aspect of it and we so we had the same kind of goal in mind so we clicked real real quick with him and we did a lot of fun stuff with him and work with john Feldman, who would produce this war as ours and you know it's it's a lot of experimenting goes on with us but at the basis of it all you know monty money you know will tend to bring the riffs and we go from there you know and so that that's really what it is and that's kind of how it's always been he always just is the 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 leader in terms of you know where the song 
to take shape and everything. So cool. that hasn't changed. You also worked with Patrick, Patrick Stump on this record as well. Speaking of working with oh, some other people. Fuck, you want to talk about a genius, dude? Holy yeah, tell shit, me, tell dude. me about that. Man, I mean, he just took our our aspect. Like I just finished saying, Monty always comes with a riff, and then we go from there. Well, this time, he kind of heard like one of our songs one time through, and was like, "Oh, this is this is rad. Let's go for this vibe." And then we just kind of like really sat and dove into what that song was going to be about. And he, his focus was on lyrics above everything else. And, you know, that's something that sometimes it was great for us. And sometimes we just, just want to fucking rock out and we don't care. It's like, just write about anything. Just fucking, let's just have some heavy, you know. But in this case, it was really about what the song meant to us and that particular song is called picture perfect mm -hmm. so it deals with you know you know loss you know you you lose a loved one and everything and at that particular time i was just, <clears throat> i had just gone through a loss with my my girlfriend who i've been with for eight years her her grandmother had just passed away and so i was feeling that whole vibe and monty's wow. best friend had passed away in a motor a motorcycle accident recently and so you know that whole vibe was just like, all right, this song needs to truly embody everything that we've felt, you know? And so that's what he did. And he made us sit down and, you know, really perfect the words and make sure and the melodies would come secondary where it's always been, this is the melody, this is what the song's gonna sound like now, attach your meaning to it. And this time it was the other way around. It's like, well, these are the words. How, do we, how are we gonna fit them into the music? And so that that's, what we learned from him and it was it man this he's so quick too and we just sat there and just like whoa you get it dude <laughs> like, he's nice. awesome he helped us so much it was amazing working with him i would love to work with him like i'll just be in a band with him he's fucking awesome <laughs> <laughs> for real nice over the course of the of the last few years you know you guys have gone through some lineup changes which every band goes through a lineup changes it happens yeah. it's natural um how have the latter changes with you guys affected you personally as a musician and the band? And maybe how is the band better now? Um, shit, dude. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you that. Uh, yeah, yeah, well, a rock band is probably never, like, good <laughs> in terms of relationships with each other. It's, it's rare that you'll find a band who just clicks and they just have it and they never have drama. That it just doesn't happen. It's just right. physically impossible. Um, but I mean, the shit that we had to deal with, you know, from early on, mm -hmm. you know, it's the same thing that we just dealt with with Max, you know, and, and Max is, I love him, like, that's a problem that I had with the whole experience with him, because realistically, he probably should have been out of the band fucking since, you know, Craig joined the band, because he was, he's always been, like, pretty, like, a big drug addict and everything. And, you know, I don't want to put all his business on blast, you know, that's that's not mm -hmm. for, for me to do. But he had problems. He had some demons and everything. And, and finally, you know, as, as me, as a friend, Monty was over it. He hated being in a band. He didn't want to be around it. I, I was finally like, dude, I love you. You're my best friend. But, you know, you got to fix, you know, your, your problems with your life and stuff because it's dragging everything else around you down. And, you know, it's not to say that everyone is innocent in the situation, especially in this band. <clears throat> everyone fucks up. Everyone does shit. That's unacceptable. But I think his was at a point where it was in jeopardy of causing him his life. And that was a risk I couldn't take. Because then I'm just... You staying in this band is almost like coding your problem and your addiction. So I had to let him go. And it hurt, man. It, and I thought that was the end, to be honest. I thought that was the end of the band. I, like. We finished up the Upper Tour and I was like, fuck, gotta go start another band, find another band to play with, find a different career, I don't know, you know, and it, it's fucking hard, you know, but luckily we had TJ and he was fucking there and his energy's awesome. He just, he, I mean, he keeps being in a band pretty simple. It's just like fucking show up, let's jam, let's fucking, let's, let's, let's be a band and, and, it's, and it's awesome and he taught me how to love it again because I stopped loving it because of all the all the, the problems and you know Michael's been there since the fucking beginning I don't even need to talk much about it that dude's always been with the fucking band and it was finally like all right dude here you go you're official you get to fucking enjoy all our debt 
all our problems, <laughs> make all the shitty decisions, and you know, I guess you get paid like a member, or you fucking don't get paid like one. <laughs> it's like it's all the same, you know. So you just became official, but it, you know, it's it's never been easy with this band, and I don't think any band has it too easy. The difference is that we don't break up; we keep going. Awesome. Um, the album title itself is a very strong title. Um, what does and it can be taken a couple different ways, and I've I've heard a couple, you know, interpretations. But for you personally, what does the title mean to you? Uh, everything I just told you, <laughs> basically, <laughs> okay. uh, we were ungrateful. That's that's what it came down to. We had a lot of different titles for this album. We had a great idea, and ultimately, we just decided this was the way to go. And you know, when you see the bird in the crown, when I first saw that, I'm like. This looks dumb. This is not like anything we've ever done, but you know it, what it represents is, is is everything that that's kind of been escaped fate, which is we have everything in front of us. We have this opportunity, and the world is at is at our feet that we can just take it and, and become a fucking awesome band and do something truly special. And then we fuck ourselves. <laughs> you know that's kind of you know how it is, and that's and we really looked at it and it's like. Dude, it's because we're ungrateful, you know, and ungrateful kind of with different contexts of the song versus the full title of the album. But, you know, that's that's what it represents. It's just cool. us, you know, having to accept what we have and to appreciate it. You know, now the problems I do have, they suck, but I'm thankful for them because I might not have it tomorrow. You know, so that's, that's what that's all about. Cool. And uh, back in January, you guys played a free show uh, to promote the album. Yeah. What what led that de to that decision to do the free show? Fucking label. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Keep it real. Uh, no, Fair no. Enough. It's, uh, well, well, the idea of it was, I mean, it, it was just that we, you know, we had, uh, we wanted to capture a live DVD, and you know, we hadn't played it so long, and we were gonna be playing a lot of new songs. We're just like, fuck it, dude. Let's, let's just have fun with it and let's just invite our fans to come out because it wasn't like a concert it was more because we were wanted to film a, a live show and so that was the idea behind it and dude and i was actually surprised because at that point it had been like two years since we had done a fucking thing you know because uh, of the whole process of you know the making of the album and that point it was like the album's done it's here <laughs> our fans going to be here, you know, <laughs> and they fucking were, you know, and that was incredible, dude, to see that, to see the energy, it was, it was phenomenal, I mean, the new shit went off really well, too, awesome. which was a, which was a, a pleasant surprise, because, hell, I only heard this stuff once or twice, and that was because I had to learn it from, you know, after you get done with the studio, you don't remember what the hell you played, so right. I had to relearn it, and then I'm like, okay, cool, I remember, and they were just like rocking out like they had heard it the whole time, you know, like they already knew the album, so that was I knew we were onto something special when we did that, so I'm, I'm really happy that we did, though, because that shit was fun. That was the one that was released with the album, right? What's that? The DVD that was released with the album? Yeah, yeah. So it was cool. killer. Because, like, we went back and forth, because we are like, well, why don't we do one, like, in a year and a half from now, when people actually know the album, and... <laughs> We've been practicing and we've been playing shows and we actually sound good. Or why, why, why not wait till then? But it was just like, nah, dude, let's do it now so we can actually give our fans something more than just the album. We can actually awesome. give them the album and DVD, you know. So awesome. That was kind of the whole idea. So have you looked past? Have you looked into the future at all after this tour is done and as the beginning of the tour? Have you planned anything for after this tour, rest of the year or anything? What's the rest of the year look like for you guys? I mean, it's, it's a lot of the same, dude, just touring and promoting. Cool. Um, we have uh, another single already picked out and the follow-up single to that nice. already picked out. So, I mean, we're really excited. I think our fans would be really excited. They've been clamming, clamoring for this, for these songs. So, um, I mean, we've got some big ideas, and we have some big tours coming on. I don't think I can, we can announce one just yet, because we're still on this tour. <laughs> um, but there is some big coming in, you know, the September, fall, nice. or, you know, October-ish kind of area. But, yeah, we got we got a lot of stuff planned out for the rest of the year into next summer, you know. So there's a lot of work to be done. A lot of bridges to rebuild for our old fan base, and a lot of new ones to build for our new fans that are yet to hear us so got a lot to look forward to in the next year 
Awesome. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you.